guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name's Jenny, I have a blog called Ramblings of a Jaffa Cat, and I also make videos here. Um, so yeah, welcome, I hope you're all well today. Um, I'm back with a, I guess a fairly serious kind of video. Um, you'll have seen from the title already that it is about loneliness, but loneliness in like younger adults or the younger generation. Um, and I just, like I haven't got like a particular format for this video at all. I've been like writing some notes in my little book so if I keep like looking down that's why because um, I've kind of got things I want to cover but basically it's just going to be like me chatting on about what I think about loneliness, how I experience loneliness and also some like tips that I've kind of been researching a bit of how and also things that I've done of things you can kind of do to help loneliness. So I hope it's going to be kind of helpful um, because you know, it's a subject that I think is not talked about enough. Um, but yeah, if I kind of ramble on a bit, I do apologise. Um, but yeah, let's just get started really. So, loneliness, I don't think is particularly talked about for younger people or sort of younger adults. It's very kind of common and spoken about amongst the elderly, um, which is, you know, just as important, elderly people you know, I have seen from my experience go through terrible loneliness. Um, but the circumstances are different, I think, to people, say, my age. So I'm nearly 29. And um, I get lonely a lot. Um, and, yeah, it isn't something that people chat about. Um, I don't know why there is such a stigma around being lonely and talking about being lonely. Um, but... I know like I'm quite an open person but even I find it difficult to admit that I'm lonely um I don't know why I think I feel like people might judge me if I say I'm lonely um and also people don't necessarily understand so I have quite a lot of people around me I have a big family um I've got like friends online like some online friends my uni friends so it's not like I'm alone, but there is a massive difference between being lonely and being alone, I think. I found some research by Relate and Relationship Scotland, um, and they found that as many as one in eight adults um, feel that they don't have a close friend or confidant, um, and one in five adults feel lonely all the time. And to be honest, that doesn't really surprise me because I think, although it's not talked about much, I think it is a massive problem. Um, I started a group recently, well, I started a group a while ago on Facebook for people in my local area with mental health problems and we had our first like proper meet up um, recently and one of the things we really like talked about was loneliness and I mean there were a variety of people in our groups, there was, I think I was probably one of the youngest going up to sort of people in their 60s, 70s, I'm not sure um, and every one of the people that came to that group said that they felt lonely. Um, and I don't know, I think that's quite a massive thing. And for me, it, I found it a little bit emotional because I'd never really spoken properly to anyone about feeling lonely before. Um, and it's very easy to think that it's just you, but it really isn't. Um, and most of the people that spoke about it said they had people around them um, and stuff, but they still felt lonely, they still felt like they didn't have somebody that they could open up to, that they could talk to about difficulties and things, you know, you can talk to people about what was on the telly last night or um, so and so in a magazine or something, but you need people to be able to talk to about deep, deep stuff, so how you're feeling, what you're struggling with, what you're worried about, um, and I think when you haven't got that, that really can make you feel very lonely. So I've kind of been thinking about like why are we struggling with lonely loneliness so much? Like I don't know I don't know, I don't know whether it is a recent thing or whether it's always been a problem. But certainly for me I've become more aware of it more recently and I don't know this is just my opinions, but I don't know if it has something to do with social media, um and also how busy people are. People don't have the opportunities to just meet up with someone for a coffee or um, I don't know like go out for dinner or go to the cinema like things like that so much now like it's always like 
oh, I'm just going to send so-and-so a quick text or um, saying hello to someone on your Facebook or something like that. And I think that that's got quite a big thing to do with it because as great as social media is, it's not face-to-face -face contact. And I know that I, I feel kind of guilty sometimes because I do have, I've got a few Facebook friends and I have a few friends who don't live nearby and I count them as very good friends, but sometimes you just need face-to-face -face contact. You need to meet up with someone, look them in the eye and say, I'm really struggling or, you know, I did something great this weekend and I want to talk about it. And it's just a different experience, I think, from actually texting somebody because you get their, like, immediate feedback and... I don't know, there's a different way of relating to each other when you're actually talking to each other like face to face. So I think one of the biggest problems or the biggest causes of loneliness is just yeah, that busyness, the, the use of social media, the fact that we don't spend much time with each other anymore and everything always has to be, you know, on technology and it has to be instant and yeah, there just isn't that like connection anymore and I think that's a massive problem. Um, for a lot of people, myself included. So loneliness can also be really connected to mental illness um, in kind of different ways. So let's start with like if you have a mental illness, so if you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anxiety or anything like that, um, they can really hinder the connections that you can make. It can make it difficult for you to go out, it can make you difficult, it difficult for you to make friends, to talk to people and things like that. So because of your mental health problems, you start to feel lonely. But also, it can kind of be the other way around. So you can start feeling lonely just for no particular reason. You just start to, you know, feel like that you don't have the support around you, you don't have people around you that kind of care about you or that you don't feel needed. And that can kind of build up and build up to the point where it can start to impact on your mental health. So it could start to cause a mental health problem. Um, so yeah, it kind of works both ways. So a lot of people just think that loneliness is like the result of a mental health problem, but it can absolutely be the cause as well and vice versa. And it can kind of swing, yeah, swing like that either way. Um, and I think that's really important to remember. And so I also think it's really important to like understand that everybody has different needs um, and everyone has different social needs. So like for me, say one person might do really well with just having a couple of close friends, not necessarily seeing them that often, but they're content with that and they feel happy and they don't feel lonely. Whereas somebody else might feel like they need a lot of people around them. They need like constant interaction, um, you know, a lot of different people. So you're, they've got like different conversations and interactions going on and they don't like to be alone or have any kind of alone time at all. And that is what helps them to, you know, not feel lonely. And there's stuff in between, you know, some people like don't particularly want any friends and they're happy with that and that's fine. So I think it's important not to kind of judge yourself by other people's standards or other people's, what's the word, like, I don't know, just the way other people live. Um, it's, you know, you need to, we need, we all need to understand that everybody is different and, you know, everybody needs different things. So, you know, what's right for one person isn't right for the other. So with this video and with the tips I'm going to go through in a minute, I've really tried to kind of make them as general as possible. Um, but obviously, you know, when I'm going through them, you need to apply it to yourself and, you know, have a think about, is it actually something that, you know, would help me or actually is it not applicable to me at all? Um, because, you know, it's hard to find tips that are gonna like suit everybody because everyone is so different. So I thought I would start now with the tips. Um, I don't like the word tips because it sounds like if you do these things, you won't be lonely. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like I've tried doing a lot of these things and have still felt lonely at times. Um, but I do think that these are things that you can do to just try and help yourself. Um, if you want to help yourself, you know, some people are okay with being lonely and that's fine as well. Um, but I've just kind of, you know, had a think about what kind of things I've done to try and help when I'm feeling lonely and I'm feeling, you know, sad and that I want to, like, change things for myself. So tip number one is to work out, like, 
why you're feeling lonely. So, you know, I think there are like different kinds of loneliness. So some people feel lonely because they don't have enough interaction, they don't see people enough, they feel like they need more interaction. Whereas other people have a lot of people around them, like I said I, like about me earlier, I have a lot of people around me, but I still feel lonely. And I think in that case, you're kind of maybe missing something. Um, that's not to say that, you know, you don't appreciate the people that you've got around you, but I've always been kind of of the understanding that kind of, sounds awful, but different people serve different purposes. Um, so perhaps, you know, maybe in my case, there's a gap there that I'm missing that I don't have someone to have certain interactions with. Um, so yeah, I think to sort of start things off, it's really important to work out actually, why am I lonely? Because that's gonna impact on what you can then do to change that. So tip number two is to be proactive and to start making new connections. So that is if you are kind of you know, feel like you're missing connections. If you don't feel like you're missing connections, then obviously this isn't gonna be a tip for you. Um, but if you feel like, you know, you need more people to connect with, the only way you're gonna get over that or, or to improve that is to start making new connections. And it really, it's not easy. I'm not gonna pretend it is because it can be blooming scary trying to make new friends as, as an adult. And maybe I'll like talk about that in another video, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like trying to find friends as an adult is just, is hard. You can't just go up to someone like you would as a child in the playground and be like, oh, be my friend because people will kind of think you're weird. So like, for ideas of like how you can do it, joining like clubs or like groups or classes in your local area that kind of interest you because if you join in stuff that's going to interest you, hopefully you're going to meet other people that you can relate to. So, you know, if you want to go to like Pilates or if you enjoy, I don't know, colouring or um, scuba diving or, you know, anything like that have a look in your local area and see if there's any kind of clubs or groups going on that you could join. Um, and the good thing about that kind of thing is you're kind of going with the idea of learning a skill or a task. Um, you're not going there just to make friends and I think that can take the pressure off a bit. You could also like start volunteering. I found that's a really great way of meeting people and talking to people and kind of starting to make connections. Um, there are so many ways to volunteer. Um, it completely depends on what you want to do, whether you want to be like outside helping with like the countryside and gardening and things, whether you want to work in a school, whether you want to help like in a youth club, um, whether you want to help sort of with the elderly, there is there is so much to do. So it's worth kind of just doing a bit of a Google and seeing what is available in your area. Um, and if you're really struggling to kind of make those like face-to-face -face connections, you could start on social media. I know, you know, I said it's not all that great all the time, but you've, you've got to kind of, I suppose, find the, the good bits around it. And there are so many groups um, and forums and stuff like that on like Facebook and beyond um, where you can just join in and start chatting to people. I mean, I'm on a Bath and Body Works forum um, and that gives me people to talk to about Bath and Body Works because I love candles and smelly stuff. Um, so there is literally like, you know, a group for everyone and that just might help you to start chatting to people you never know, you might make a friend out of it or it might just give you a bit more confidence to then go out and start meeting people face to face as well. Um, so yeah, just start making some connections because until you do that, your circle isn't gonna get any bigger. And if you feel like that's what you need, I think that's what you need to do. And I think even if you are not of the, opi uh, not of the opinion that you need more connections, um, but you sort of, are more like me and you feel like you're surrounded by people but you don't, you still feel lonely. Um, I think it can still help to try and make more connections because, you know, like I said, I think that maybe that there is like a gap that's missing um, and that's why you're feeling lonely. Or So either making new connections but also making connections with people 
that you already know so you know maybe there's sort of, sort of friendships that are quite new that you feel like you want to develop and that maybe they will kind of help you feel less lonely so maybe putting some time and effort into those you know organizing to meet up or just chatting like about things that you wouldn't necessarily have talked about before um so yeah even if you're not making new connections making connections that you already have a bit better may well help with loneliness as well so tip number three is to make gradual changes so as i said it's not easy kind of going from being lonely to not feeling lonely um i think i feel like there's quite a sort of big gap in between and so to think that you can go from complete loneliness to not being lonely at all is quite a scary thought and also quite an unrealistic thought um so i think it's all about baby steps so you know not pushing yourself into like everything all at once because i think you're just going to end up feeling overwhelmed and then giving up on everything and going back to square one so you know maybe just starting like one new group or starting on social media and like gradually moving up to face-to-face -face groups or something like that um just see what i've written down yeah so if you're i don't know say you're thinking of starting a new group perhaps ask someone that you already know if they'd like to come along with you and that might just help kind of make it a little bit easier make it a little bit more gradual so you're not going in on your own um and you've also got someone there that you know um you never know you might develop the friendship with the person you already know and not make any other friends and that's okay um but i think yeah just just taking it slowly doing little bits at a time until you feel comfortable i mean i'm all for like you know pushing you out of your comfort zone and stuff but i think you've got to be careful about it because you know you don't want to push too far and to feel like you failed because that isn't going to help you with feeling lonely so just taking it slowly you know it doesn't matter how slowly you take it there's that quote about like you know as long as you're moving forward it doesn't matter and i really do believe that that's quite you know quite a good quote to live by um so yeah baby steps so tip number four is that social media isn't always helpful um now i know i've talked about social media a bit already in this video um but i just wanted to kind of emphasize it because you know as much as social media is great it isn't always helpful it can make me feel really crap and i'm pretty sure it makes a lot of other people feel crap too um i've read like research on it about it impacting people's mental health um so you have to be really careful with it and i think when it comes to loneliness it can have a massive effect like you know when you see people posting pictures of them you know in relationships or doing things with their children or going out with friends anything like that and you're sat at home on your own it's hard not to think oh i wish i was doing that i actually feel quite lonely um and yeah i know that on social media you know people post the best bits of their life usually they post the highlights but when you're feeling a bit lonely anyway it can really like plug into that and bring those feelings out more so i guess i'm just saying like be wary of social media and how you use it um don't rely on it too much because you know while you're looking at social media and I'm, I'm terrible for this you know spending my life on like instagram and twitter and facebook and stuff you're not doing much to help yourself you know make connections and and you know to help that loneliness and sitting there comparing your situation to other people's isn't going to make you feel that much better like take it from someone that's been there and done it way too much um and it's really not that easy to just ignore social media and to ignore what people are posting and to get out and do your own thing especially when you're unwell like i am or you struggle with mental health problems like i do you know going outside and meeting real people can be blooming scary and sometimes it is easier to sit on social media and chat to people and i know when i've been like housebound or bedbound social media has been like my only contact with the outside world so of course in those situations like 
I'm not saying not to use it because it can be amazing and it can lift you out of difficult situations but I think yeah it's just being mindful about how you're using it and you know maybe just like reflecting on what you feel like after you've used social media if you feel happy and you feel like great because you've chatted to your friends and you've shared some great pictures and things like that then fine like it's not a problem but if every time you're using social media you come off it and think you know oh gosh I feel awful I feel really lonely I feel like I'm missing out on everything I'm not good enough any of those kind of things if that's how you're feeling all the time then maybe you need to think about how you're using it and whether you can change it and you know make it a little bit better for yourself because putting yourself through that every day like it's horrible trust me <laughs> like you know I've been through phases like that and it really doesn't help you feel any better and yeah so if you can do something about it it's really good if you can okay and then tip number five is to talk about how you're feeling and ask for help if you need it this is one that I think is probably one of the hardest things to do especially when it comes to sort of mental health and loneliness and anything like that often the last thing you want to do is like be brave and open up about those kind of thoughts and feelings but I think I found anyway that opening up and talking to people is often the best thing to do because nine times out of ten you say so like I've said to people like oh gosh I feel really lonely like a lot of the time and they'll come back and be like yeah I feel like that too or oh I've been in that place and like this is how I made it better or this is how I've coped with it so just by talking about it you end up feeling less lonely because you find out that other people feel like you do um, and yeah like you've got to find the right people to talk about and if you haven't got close family or friends that you can talk about then you know there's your GP there's the Samaritans there's Mind there's you know all sorts of different charities and organizations who are more than happy to listen and to talk to you and, and see if they can help you as well and they can be just as helpful as talking to a friend or a family member um, but yeah I just think you know if it's really getting you down and you feel like you're in a hole and you can't get out of it and you can't see things getting any better then it really is important to ask someone for help whether it's going to your GP and maybe being referred for some counselling I know there's a massive waiting list which isn't great um, if you can afford to go privately then great but otherwise you know maybe like talking to charities and things like that like I mentioned before but also it doesn't have to be going to a professional you know if you've got a friend or a family member who you feel happy to talk to about it just bring it up with them one day maybe go out for a cup of tea or something and just say say to them you know I think just opening up and saying to them I'm really struggling or I don't feel that great at the moment or even if you can't say it maybe write it down I used to do this a lot with my parents when I was in hospital and things like that and I just couldn't get out the words to say how I was feeling so I would write them a little note um, and that would kind of start the conversation and m like most of the time now I find if I start just chatting about it it feels like a massive weight that's lifted off my shoulders um, and yeah I think just talking helps it helps to be open and this is why I'm making this video because I kind of hope that if I talk about loneliness a bit more then other people will start talking about it and other people will watch it and think oh it's not just me that feels lonely or it's not just me that struggles because there are so many people out there but we're not going to know about it unless we talk about it so yeah those were my five tips and also just my experiences and thoughts about loneliness I really hope that you found this helpful and I haven't rambled too much um, it's kind of difficult to do these videos you know when I'm doing a haul or something I have certain things to show you whereas this is just me and my notebook um, so I hope it's been alright and yeah I'd love to like hear your comments about your experiences of loneliness whether you've got any tips for kind of helping loneliness it would be great so that you could kind of share with other people um, I love reading through the comments of people's videos because I think you pick up so many more tips and so many more opinions and things like that so yeah if you've got anything you want to say about loneliness please please do comment about it below I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have and you would like to see more please like and subscribe to my channel there's also a little um, bell next to the subscribe button if you press that you get a notification every time I upload a video so you won't miss anything 
If you've got any requests as well, videos you'd like me to see me do or blog posts you'd like me to do, um, please pop those in the comments below as well. I'm always looking, like, I mean, I write lots of notes in here for ideas and stuff, but, you know, it's always great to get more. So please do let me know what you'd like to see. And I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you all again in another video very, very soon. Bye!